Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. My name is the editor, Martin Prima, joins me today to unpack the latest in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashni. So, Namibia has its foot in the green hydrogen space with a recent deal with Germany and the possibility of a second bidding process next year. Yes, I think uh, Namibia is taking some fine steps forward on the green hydrogen front, green ammonia front, and all the other aspects of this which can gain global market share. And they have great partners. Germany, which not only needs this green hydrogen, not only needs the green ammonia and everything else that's going to be produced, but they also prepared to work with Namibia very closely and to develop technology and to actually create capacity by developing people within Namibia. And this could be a fantastic boost for their gross domestic product. You know, some of the early calculations here indicate that it could more than treble the gross domestic product. And they're looking at producing 200,000 jobs from this. So it's marvelous. Plus the development of luderitz. The area of luderitz is going to be key here. And then the port development could also see this green hydrogen going into Europe, probably via Rotterdam. The first project was announced straight off the COP26, which is a 9 billion rand project. But now they're looking to requesting proposals in January, possibly at the World Economic Forum. So this is moving at a quite a rapid pace with the announcements coming out regularly in key places, which is positioning the Namibian economy very well. But importantly, they're talking about world record costs of you know, creating a kilogram of green hydrogen for one euro 50 to two euro 50. And that is going to be fantastic because they're saying that this is below a lot of the competitors at the moment. In fact, they're talking of it as a world record cost. So that should put Namibia in a very good position. And Martin, talk to us about platinum imports to China that could reduce the surplus forecast for next year. Yes, we, we're sitting with forecasts of a lot of surpluses of platinum. Quite a big surplus for this year and then a big one for next year. But what is happening behind the scenes is tremendous importation of platinum into China and not yet explained, not yet identified. I mean, this uh, will come through in time, I'm sure. But it indicates that China may be using platinum to substitute palladium at a much higher level than anticipated. But also, it looks at the loadings that it might be putting into its heavy duty vehicles could possibly be rising to the level of what occurs in other jurisdictions, which is, you know, like three grams in China versus 12 grams elsewhere it looks like the Chinese are moving up to the 12 gram situation and that is giving this tremendous pull on products at the moment platinum and this could actually have a big impact on where that surplus stands it might mean that the surplus is turned on its head by the end of 2022 and that is perhaps why there is big investment in ETFs at the moment so the investors see an opportunity and even though it might have a surplus at the moment, they're getting into these ETFs so that they'll be well placed, you know, at the start of 2023. Lastly, Martin, as ESCOM battles with electricity generation, Minerals Council South Africa member companies could deliver up to 3,900 megawatts of renewable energy projects. You know, it's amazing how the mining industry in South Africa comes to the rescue. You know, we saw it come to the rescue of the South African economy during COVID. We now see that um, it looks like it could come to the rescue as far as Eskim's needs are concerned. Eskim was talking about needing 4,000 megawatts to 6,000 megawatts to enable it to actually do proper maintenance of its existing structures. And here comes the mining industry and says, you know, we can give you within a hair's breadth of that 4,000 megawatts just from our members. Never mind everybody else that's anticipating using this 100 megawatt advantage. So we have a mining industry here and we really need to nurture it because you see there are projections that unless more exploration is done, 
This mining industry will be a pale shadow of its present self at the moment. It will fade away in 20 years time. You've got to have that ongoing exploration and perhaps all this will wake up the South African people to the fact that we've got to keep pushing this mining industry. We've got to realize that every ounce that is taken out, there needs to be one ounce at least replacing that and there's such an opportunity in critical metals at the moment, one would think that we would have a fantastic exploration strategy rolling out, but we haven't. In the meantime, in the short term, we can see that this industry mining can come to the rescue on the energy front. And I'm sure that uh, the whole of South Africa will be pleased if those projects can go ahead fast. And they're still calling for smart tape, which indicates that there must be red tape still down the line. And I think they need to remove that very fast in the interest of the South African people. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.